God is also represented as the son of Lakshmi and Vishnu. He is called the bodiless from a misadventure with Shiva, whom he dared to aim at, but the indignant deity reduced the anchor to cinders with one glance of his central eye. He is painted as a handsome boy riding on a parrot and surrounded by maidens who bear his banner with the fish makara. 43. The Forest of Brahma A wood where the Vedas are read and expounded, a Hindu academic. 44. The reverential prostration of the eight members. The salutations of India are Spanish in their variety and exactness. The salam is universal, but the native greets his neighbor with the more cordial Ram Ram and receives it with gratification from the sahib. The better hand must always be employed and is raised, pressed to the palm of the other to perform a namaskar, the salutation of a Brahman. The prostration alluded to in the text is performed by lowering at once to the ground the hands, breast, forehead, eyes, two knees, and two feet. 45. The Moment of Fortunate Conjunction The astrologer is an important personage in every Hindu town or village to decide upon lucky or unlucky days. The rules for his decision are freely given by Manu. The day of new moon, he says, destroys the spiritual teacher or guru. The fourteenth is bad for the learner, and nothing in the Veda read on the eighth day and the day of full moon will be remembered. 46. A vow to Gauri, the fair goddess, that is Parvati, wife of Shiva. 47. He whose forehead dwell is the moon, Shiva. 48. The Surma, Unjun, the antimony powder used universally by Hindu women to darken the lids and lashes of the eye. It is applied with a small stick rubbed upon the powder, and a little consequently goes a long way. 49. Chatti, the large earthen pot employed to hold water. 50. Seeing how the ant hill grows. In the great plains of India, the large ant hills form a marked future. They are thrown up with great rapidity and have been seen to rise by a public road to the height of three feet or more in a night. 51. The Chatra The white umbrella borne above the heads of Indian Rajas and especially appropriated to royalty like the chauri or yak tail. 52. The retreat of Drumma, personified virtue under the form of the bull of Shiva. 53. Kayath caste, a writer, a man sprung from a Kshatriya father and a Sudra mother. 54. Washerman, the labor of the laundry in India is always performed on hard rocks by the riverside and principally by men called dobies. 55. Starve thy maw, etc. Literally, with the belly, serve the eater of oblations. Utashan, that is, stint thyself to perform the sacrifice. 56. Brahaspati, the grave regent of the planet Jupiter, and instructor of the divinities. 57. In the north, there are no lions in India, excepting that called the mainless lion occasionally met with in Gujarat. 58. The king of Chidi, Sishupala, he took also the forms of Ravana and of Hiranyakasipu, to oppose Krishna who killed him. 59. Ganapati, Ganesh, the deity of prudence, born from the bathing water of the goddess Parvati. A cowrie, 
a little seashell used in India for small change, about 6,000 go to the rupee. 61. The tree of paradise. A tree growing in Indra's swarga, which instantly produced whatever was desired. 62. The form called Gandharva. Manu, in his book third, gives the form of eight different kinds of marriage. This is that without ceremonies and by mutual consent. The ordinary Hindu rite is very graceful and resembles in some points the classic custom. At any time after the moon or investiture with the sacred thread, the Brahmin boy is marriageable and the girl must not be ten years old. They meet at the bride's house, the Langana Patrika or marriage horoscope having been previously made out by the astrologer. There they go through the Satpati, walking together three times round a fire, seven steps at each time. Then their garments are tied together and an offering is placed upon the flames, completing the rite. The bride remains at her father's house until the age of twelve or thirteen, when she is claimed by her husband. 63. Cut thy nose off. The ordinary expedient of an incensed husband in the East. 64. Yama and the Seven Guardians. These eight protecting deities rank next below the Hindu trinity. They are 1. Indra, the air, 2. Agni, the fire, 3. Chandra, the moon, 4. Surya, the sun, 5. Pavana, the wind, 6. Yama, the lord of justice and of the lower worlds, 7. Varuna, god of the waters, and 8. Kubera, the master of wealth. 65. Shaving the head of the barber's wife. This indignity reduced her to the appearance and the miserable status of a widow. 66. The three prerogatives of the throne. Regal authority derives its rights from the three sources with the Hindu authors, namely power, prescription or continuance, and wisdom. 67 watered them with nectar. The Greek word nectar and the Sanskrit amrit are alike in their etymology. The immortal both were the food of the undying gods, and the Hindu deities thus obtained their ambrosia. The Daityas, like the Titans, had waged war upon the divinities, the Asuras, and these last betook themselves to Vishnu for protection. He bade them cast certain medicinal herbs into the sea of milk, then taking Mount Mandara for a churning stick and the king of the serpents for the twisting string, the god began to churn the ocean for nectar. The Daityas themselves aided on promise of sharing in the strength restoring extract and stood at the serpent's head while the asuras worked at the tail. The great Vishnu also took part in the work as a tortoise, upon whose back the mountain whirled round backwards and forwards. Out of the seething flood there came up at the last a figure robed in white. Danvantari, the physician of the gods, who bore in his hands the first cup full of Amrit. From the same ocean also rose the ever lovely Lakshmi, the marvellous cow from which all things that could be desired might be milked. And the Kalkut, a poison which stained the neck of Shiva, 
The nectar thus obtained bestowed new vigor on the wearied gods, and was stored up in the moon where the lunar rays ripen and perfect it. 68. Gurud, the lord of the birds. He is the vehicle and the attendant of Vishnu, and has a human face with the wings of a bird. 69. The god Narayan. Varuna, god of the world of waters. This deity is regent of the west, and a lord of punishment, holding a noosed cord, wherewith to bind transgressors beneath the sea. His vahana, a vehicle, is the great fish mukar. The present age kalpa of the world is called varaha, or the boars, and was initiated by Narayan. When that supreme lord says the Vishnu Puran, Walk and beheld the universe void, knowing that the earth lay hid within the waters, he assumed the body of a wild boar, and plunged in them, raised up the earth till it floated upon the waves. The name Narayan, suggestive of the Greek Nereus, denotes him whose progress, Ayana, is upon the face of the waters, Nara. The life to come, literally, the other world, Paralok. 71. The Azure Lotus The lotus resembles our water lily, but is more varied in form and colour. They are white, red, blue, and yellow varieties. 72. Another hath the spoils. There is a belief constantly occurring in Hindu writings that the elephant's head contains precious stones resembling pearls. The remorseful monarch alludes to this and compares his conquest to the slaughter of an elephant, which leaves guilt to the lion and gives the pearls to some chance hunter. 73. A Brahmin who eats all things equally. This epithet, Sarvabaksha, and the comparison are very strong and suffice to quiet King Twani Hyde's conscience. A Brahmin who ate flesh would be like the unclean rakshasas or demons. 74. Peacock and Swan The peacock is wild in most Indian jungles. The swan, Sanskrit hansa, is a species of flamingo of a white colour with markings of a golden yellow. The voice and gait of a beautiful woman are likened in the Hindu poets to those of the hansa. It is a vehicle of the god Brahma. 75. The Vindhya Mountains. The chain between Hindustan and the south country are Deccan. The name is said to imply that they appear from their loftiness to stop the sun in his declining course. Jambu Dwipa. The land of the rose apple. The central of the seven continents containing the regions known to Hindu geographers. It may not be out of place to sketch in this note the Hindu cosmology. He reads in his Puranas that Pariyavarta, son of the self-born, grieving to see the earth, but half illumined at one time by the sun, drove round it seven times in his own flaming chariot, the wheels of which formed seven ruts, which are now the beds of seven oceans. The continents thus divided are also seven. Jambudvipa is the central one, with Mount Meru for its own centre, where men are born of the colour of burnished gold, and the women resemble blue lotuses, where all live as do the gods, and have the vital forces of ten thousand elephants. Around Jambudvipa runs a sea of salt water, and beyond it lies the Plaksha Dvipa. There the happy inhabitants know nothing of sickness and live five thousand years. Plaksha Dvipa is divided by a sea of sugarcane juice from Shalamalai Dvipa. The castes of this continent are the Twani, the purple, the yellow and the red, and in it the vicinity of the gods is very delightful to the soul. A sea of wine intervenes between this land and Kushadvipa. There no one dies. 